Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for similar content coming soon. Today's video is part of my current series on therapies for type 2 diabetes and this particular video focuses on sulfonylureas and glanides. I'm going to begin with a brief introduction about the disease itself. Islets of Langerhans are small patches of endocrine tissue in the human pancreas. They contain alpha cells, beta cells and delta cells among others. When our gastrointestinal tracts are empty, usually periods above three hours after meals, alpha cells secrete glucagon. Glucagon acts in a wide range of tissues in the body, all with the aim of ensuring blood glucose concentrations don't get too low. These effects include inhibiting glucose uptake by bodily tissues, as well as the breakdown of storage molecules to generate glucose. However, when glucose is being absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract, usually shortly after a meal, beta cells are stimulated to secrete insulin. As well as inhibiting the secretion of glucagon and therefore inhibiting all of its effects, insulin acts in a variety of tissues all working to reduce blood glucose concentration. These effects include increasing glucose uptake as well as increasing the production of storage molecules. As you can see, these two hormones have opposing effects and together produce blood glucose homeostasis. However, in type 2 diabetes, the insulin arm of this process is diminished. This can be caused by dysfunctional beta cells resulting in reduced insulin secretion or reduced insulin sensitivity in peripheral tissues, or indeed both. The incidence of type 2 diabetes is rapidly increasing in all four countries of the UK, with 10% of the NHS's entire budget going towards the condition. A more detailed description of type 2 diabetes can be found in my introduction video, which I'll provide the link for below. One family of drug that is used to treat this condition is the sulfonylureas which act to increase insulin secretion from beta cells. First, I'm going to show you the normal process of glucose-dependent insulin secretion and then how sulfonylureas enhance this. So, when blood glucose concentration is elevated after a meal, glucose enters beta cells via glucose transporters. It then gets metabolized by glycolysis, the TCA cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, producing ATP. This ATP binds to and blocks ATP-dependent potassium channels. This channel usually mediates a constant potassium efflux maintaining the cell's membrane potential, so when this is blocked, the cell becomes depolarized. This causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open, facilitating a calcium influx. This calcium works both directly and via secondary enzymes to stimulate the exocytotic release of insulin. This is the process of glucose-dependent insulin secretion. So looking more closely at these ATP-dependent potassium channels, they consist of four KIR 6.2 channels and four sulfonylurea receptors. The sulfonylurea receptor can bind ATP, sulfonylureas, and glyonides, any of which causes the channel's pores to close. As discussed before, this causes the beta cell to depolarize, opening voltage-gated calcium channels, which mediates the exocytotic release of insulin. As you can see, sulfonylureas and glyonides bypass the glucose metabolism section of normal glucose-dependent insulin secretion, meaning this insulin secretion is completely independent from glucose concentration. This is quite a dangerous property of these drugs because if a patient takes them while having a low blood glucose concentration, such as when they first wake up, hypoglycemia may be induced. Drugs which mediate glucose-dependent insulin secretion are much safer, and I'll put the links for my videos on GLP-1 analogues and DPP-4 inhibitors below. 
Another weakness of sulfonylureas is that they cause weight gain, potentially exacerbating the diabetes. Remember, a large proportion of type 2 diabetes patients develop the condition as a direct result of diabetes. Additionally, potentially due to the blockade of KATP channels on cardiomyocytes, these drugs have been associated with increased risk of coronary heart disease. Available drugs in the UK include glibenclamide, glicclizide, glipizide and glicridone. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.